Let's talk about the ground reaction force during running. And specifically, let's talk about the anterior posterior ground reaction force. Anterior posterior ground reaction force is the force that's pushing uh, against the direction of movement or in uh, the same direction as movement. Now, during running, uh, we sometimes try to uh, think that we're running a constant speed, but hardly ever is that happening. In fact, every time our foot strikes the ground, we will slow down and then speed up during the stance phase of running. And we see that slowing down and speeding up reflected in the anterior posterior ground reaction force. So what I'm gonna do is draw a typical ground reaction force profile for the anterior posterior ground reaction force, and then uh, identify some of the key components of that profile that we uh, typically analyze uh, for movement. Okay, so here's what I have. On the y-axis is the anterior posterior ground reaction force, positive, zero, negative. Remember the force can be acting in line with uh, the person, or excuse me, in the same direction or in the opposite direction. Uh, as the runner. And then down here I have uh, time. And so here I'll put TO for takeoff. And over here at time zero, I'll put GC for ground contact. So what happens if we run across the force platform? What do the data look like in an anterior posterior direction? Well, it will look something very much like this. There are some subtle details but uh, this is pretty much what the anterior posterior ground reaction force will look like. So what does this tell me? Well, let, let, let's look at, uh, let me draw a couple of stick figures here just so you can see where we are. This is ground contact. And here's my uh, stick figure for a person striking a ground. Okay. And the force acting on the person in the horizontal direction, specifically the anterior posterior direction, is the ground reaction force. And the way that uh, we're gonna look at this is just the anterior posterior, and this would be the uh, ground reaction force and the direction of the force pushing against the foot, point of application, right there, A, P. Now the vertical ground reaction force is here, but I'm not gonna draw that because I'm only interested in the anterior poster uh, movement right now. I'm also not gonna draw gravity because gravity is a vertical force, not a horizontal force. And so I'm not going to draw the uh, gravity factor in here. Now I could draw an air resistance if we were gonna deal with that, but I'm gonna continue to, to gloss over that at this point, but that air resistance would be a, a force that would be uh, pushing against the runner if it was a headwind or pushing with the runner if it was a tailwind. But for now, I'm just gonna deal with this uh, ground reaction force. Now that's at this moment in time. And that's, a, remember, forward is positive, so that's pointing that way. That's all of these forces here pushing against the runner. Different magnitudes of force pushing in the negative direction, opposing direction of movement. Now these are not huge forces. This may be, a quarter of a body weight. Uh, it may be even less than that. Um, maybe 50 newtons, maybe 100 newtons, maybe 150 newtons. Uh, so not, a, not necessarily a lot. This is influenced by uh, some speed uh, as well as some running style, uh, how long your stride is, for example, for a given speed. Okay, so all the way up until this point right here, the horizontal ground reaction force in the anterior posterior direction is pushing against the direction of movement. So there's no other forces acting in the horizontal direction. So this force pushing against this person is actually causing this person to slow down during this phase right here. It's causing the person to slow down because there's no other force trying to propel the person forward. So where does propulsion come from? Well, that's over here on this side. And now I'll try to draw the runner with the foot in contact with the ground still. And now later in stance, and this other leg is being swung forward. And now I've got a force in the anterior posterior direction 
pushing on the runner in this direction here. That's also the ground reaction force. Okay, both of those are the inter posterior ground reaction forces. In this case, this force is pushing in the same direction as the runner, pushing that way. Point at point of application is on the foot. And that's all these positive forces. Anywhere where this force is pushing in the same direction, the magnitude of that force is illustrated on this profile. These are all positive forces. These are all uh, causing uh, uh, propulsion for uh, the runner. Okay, so now let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So obviously we can identify peak forces. We don't actually have names for this, uh, for like F1 or F2, but this would be F braking peak, and this would be F propulsion peak. Okay, so we can identify the peak force in braking and identify the peak force in propulsion. Now, there is some intricacies in how what happens in this first part of this curve when we look at actual data. Uh, I'm gonna go over, I'm, I'm gonna gloss over that at this stage, uh, but in general, all the forces from the moment the foot's hitting the, the ground, we consider to be negative, although there, there can be some unique details in there that uh, could throw us uh, off in a different direction especially if we end up having a period of double support where the other foot is in contact with the ground, that can really change what happens initially with this uh, ground reaction force profile. Okay, so now what's happening here uh, with velocity? Well, at this moment in time, I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna put velocity, I'm gonna write velocity at ground contact is some value, okay? And I'm just gonna leave that right there. I'll put a dot here. At takeoff, we can also look at the velocity at takeoff. And a lot of times when we're talking about running a constant velocity, we're really talking about the velocity at contact is the same at the velocity as, as takeoff. But what we see here is with this horizontal force in the anterior posterior direction, all of these forces are causing to reduce this velocity and all these forces are causing velocity to increase. So if I drew a sort of a, a dashed or, or sort of a line representing what's happening in velocity during stance phase, it's going to slow down and then speed up. It's going to slow down and speed up with each foot strike. How much slowing down and how much speeding up there is, is dependent on how big and how robust this profile is. One way to quantify that is to look at the peak forces. Another way is to look at impulse. Impulse is the area under a curve. And uh, the area under the curve is really what I talk, what I mean by that is the area between the curve and zero. So we would calculate this area in here. Because that's all the negative forces, we would call that breaking impulse. Okay, breaking impulse. Then we would calculate the area under this portion of the curve. And we would have propulsion impulse. represented as this area in here. It's the area under the curve. If, these, if this area is the same as this area, that actually means this velocity is the same as this velocity. If this area ends up being bigger than this area, that means we have more braking than speeding up and the velocity at contact would be greater than the velocity at toe off. We've got another presentation on this. If this area is bigger than this area, that means there's more propulsion and the velocity at takeoff will be greater than the velocity at contact. So if I'm looking at sprinting, especially if I'm looking at the first 15 meters of a 100 meter sprint, this propulsion area is really big 
and this air braking area is small. But when I'm running a constant velocity, the braking impulse and the propulsion impulse will be pretty close to each other. And if I'm slowing down, like at the end of a race or after doing a 100 meter sprint, I'm gonna have a lot of braking area and a small propulsion area. I've got another video on that, uh, so you can zero in on that. But the, these are the uh, parameters here uh, that we would use to, to describe the anterior posterior ground reaction force. Braking impulse, propulsion impulse, peak force in the braking phase, and peak force in the propulsion phase. Okay, and uh, that all those parameters can help us describe what's going to happen to velocity during stance. All right, thank you.